Welcome to the 23rd day reading. This is Saturday. Today is Friday. We are watching this on Saturday, but today is Friday. So I have this video recorded to go public on Friday. On Saturday. So, so for Saturday's reading, we are reading from Leviticus chapter 21 to chapter 25. We have not seen the other readings you can check them out on my channel to know where we are continuing so i can relate to where we are it's been a long time it has been 22 days so please check that out and let's begin chapter 21 now the lord said to moses speak to the priests the sons of aaron and say to them none shall defile himself for the dead among his people except for his relatives who are nearest to him his, his mother, his father, his son, his daughter, and his brother, also his virgin sister who is near to him, who has, who has no husband, for her he may, be, he may defile himself, otherwise he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people to prevent himself. They shall not make any bald place on their heads, nor shall they shave the edges of their be beards to make any cutting in their flesh. They shall be, they shall be holy to their God. And not prevent the name of, of their God. For they offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God. Therefore they shall be holy. They shall not take a wife who is a harlot or a defiled woman, nor shall they take a woman divorced from her husband. For the priest is holy to his God. Therefore you shall consecrate him, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy to you, for I, for I the Lord, who sanctify you, am holy, the daughter of any priest. If she prevents herself by playing the alert, she prevents her father, she shall be burned with fire. He who is the high priest among his brethren, on whom on whose the on whose head the anointing oil was poured, and who is consecrated to wear the garments, shall not uncover his head, nor tear his clothes, nor shall he go near any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or his mother, nor shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. For the consecration of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord, and he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or a divorced woman, or a defiled woman, or a harlot. This he shall not marry, but he shall take a virgin of his own people as wife. Nor shall he prevent his posterity among his people, for I, the Lord, sanctify him. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, saying, No man of any descendant in succeeding generations who has any defect may have approach to offer the bread of his God. For any man who has a defect shall not approach a blind man or lame who has a mad face or any limb too long, a man who has a broken foot or a broken hand or is a hunchback or a dwarf or a man who has a defect in his eye or eczema or a scab or is a enoch. No man of the descendants of Aaron the priest who has a defect shall come near to, to offer the offering made by fire to the Lord. He has a defect. He shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. He shall he may eat the bread of his God, both the most both the most holy and the holy. Only he only he shall not go near the veil or approach the altar because he has a defect, lest he profane my sab lest he profane my sanctuary. For I the Lord sanctify them, and Moses told it to Aaron and his sons and to all the children of, of Israel. Now you can read along with me if you have your Bible with you. Then, chapter 22. Uh, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they do not profane my holy name by what they dedicate to me. I am the Lord. Say to them, Whoever of all your descendants throughout your generations who goes near the holy things which the children of Israel dedicate to the Lord, while he has uncleanness upon him, that person shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. Whatever man of the descendants of Aaron who is a leper or has a discharge shall not eat the holy offering until he is clean. And whoever touches anything made by, made unclean by a corpse or a man who has had an emission of semen or whoever touches any creeping thing by which he would be made unclean or any person by whom he would become unclean, whatever his uncleanness may be, 
The person who has touched any such thing shall be unclean until evening, and shall not eat the holy offering unless he washes his body with water. With water, and when the water, and when the sun goes down, he shall be clean. And afterward, he may eat the holy offering because it is his food. Whatever dies naturally or is torn by beast, he shall not eat. To defile himself with it, I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep my ordinance, lest they bear sin for him, for it, and die thereby. If they profane it, I, the Lord, sanctify them. No outsider shall eat the holy offering. One who dwells with the priest or a hired servant shall not eat the holy thing. But if the priest buys a person with his money, he may eat it. And one who is born in his house may eat his food. If the priest's daughter is married to an outsider, she may not eat of the holy offering. But if the priest's daughter is a widow or divorced and has no child and has returned to her father's house as in her youth, she may eat her father's food. But no outsider shall eat it. And if a man eats the holy offering unintentionally, then he shall restore a holy offering to the priest and add one fifth to it. They shall not profane the holy offering of the children of Israel, which they offer to the Lord, or allow them to bear the gift of trespass when they eat their holy offering. For I, the Lord, sanctify them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, Whatever man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers in Israel, who offers a sacrifice for any of his fowls, or for any of his free will offering, which they offer to the Lord as a bond offering, you shall offer of your own free you shall offer of your own free will a meal without blemish from the cattle, from the sheep, or from the goat. Whatever has a defect you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable on your behalf. And whoever offers a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord to fulfill his vow or a free will offering from the cattle or the sheep, it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect in it. Those that are blind or broken or maimed, or have an ulcer or eczema or scabs, you shall not offer to the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them on the altar to the Lord. Either a bull or a lamb that has any limb too long or too short, you may offer as a free will offering, but for a fowl it shall not be accepted. You shall not offer to the Lord what is bruised or crushed or torn or cut, nor shall you make any offering of them in your land, nor from a foreigner's hand shall you offer any of this as the bread of your God, because their corruption is in them and defects are in them. It shall not be accepted on your behalf. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When a bull or a sheep or a goat is born, it shall be seven days with his mother, and from the eighth day and Day after it shall be accepted as an offering made by fire to the Lord. Whether it is a cow or eve, do not kill both her and her young on the same day. And when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. On the same day it shall be eaten. You shall leave none of it until morning. I am the Lord. Therefore, you shall keep my commandments and perform them. I am the Lord. You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord who, sanctif who sanctifies you. you, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Chapter 23 And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be, to be only holy convocations, these are my feasts. Six days shall you work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. This is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord of the Lord, holy convocations which you have, which you shall proclaim as the appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover, and on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. But you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord for seven days. The seven days shall be a holy convocation. You shall not do customary work on it. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you come into the land which I give to you, and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruit of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be acceptable on your behalf. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheaf, 
a male lamb of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to the Lord for a sweet aroma, and its drink offering shall be of wine, one fourth of an in. You shall eat neither bread nor parched grain nor fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your God. It shall be started forever throughout your generations in all your offering. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Count fifty days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring from your dwellings two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruit to the Lord. And you shall offer with the bread seven lambs of the first year without blemish one young bull and two rams. They shall be as a burnt offering to the Lord, with their grain offering and their drink offering, an offering made by fire for a sweet aroma to the Lord. Then you shall sacrifice one kid of the goat as a sin offering, and two male lambs of the fourth year as a sacrifice of peace offering. The priest shall wave them with the bread, with the bread of the first fruit as a wave offering before the Lord, with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And you shall proclaim on the same day that it is a holy convocation to you. You shall do no customary work on it. It shall be a status forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not only reap the corners of your field when you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaning from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of blowing of trumpets, of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also the tenth day of his, of this seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on, the, on that same day shall be cut off from his people. But any person who does any work on that same day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening, from evening to evening. You shall celebrate your Sabbath. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak, speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth, on the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall speak, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything on its day, besides the Sabbath of the Lord, besides your gifts, besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. Also on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a Sabbath rest, and on the eighth day, a Sabbath rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the both, the boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a status forever in your generation. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Chapter 24. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you oil of pressed olive 
oil of pressed olives for the light to make the lamps burn continually. Outside the, outside the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting, Aaron shall be in charge of it from evening until morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a status forever in your generation. It shall be in charge of the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. And you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake. You shall set them in two rows, six in a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. And you shall put, fran and you shall put pure frankincense on each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath you shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place. For it is most holy to him from the offerings of the Lord made by fire, by a perpetual statute. Now the son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And this Israelite woman, and this Israelite woman's son, and a man of Israel, fought each other in, in the camp. And the Israelite woman's sons blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shalomit, the daughter of Debri, of the tribe of Dan. Then they put him in custody, that the mind of the Lord might be shown to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take outside the camp him who has caused, then let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Then you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whoever causes his God shall bear his sin, and whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall surely stone, shall certainly stone him. The stranger as well as him who is born in the land. When he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. Whoever kills any man shall surely be put to death. Whoever kills an animal shall make it good. Animal for animal. If a man causes disfigurement of his neighbor as he has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And as he has caused disfigurement of a man, so shall it be done to him. And whoever kills an animal shall restore it. But whoever kills a man shall be put to death. You shall have the same law for the stranger and, and for one from your country. For I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and they took outside the camp him who had caused and stoned him with stones. So the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 25, you can see this is a very long chapter. Chapter 25, second. And after that, we are reading the seventh day reading from Leviticus chapter 26 to, the, to Numbers. Leviticus chapter 26 to Numbers chapter 3. Right. Chapter 25, And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your feet, you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow all your feet, nor prune your vineyard. What grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is a year of rest for the land, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be for food, for you, your male and female servants. For you, your male and female servants, your hired man, and the stranger who dwells with you, for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, and, and the beasts that are in your land, all its produce shall be for food. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of, year, of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven, and the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you forty nine years. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seven months. On the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land, and you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family, that, 
that fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your own of your untended vine, for it is the jubilee. It shall be it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In the year of jubilee, each of you shall return to its possession and if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor you shall not oppress one another according to the number of years after the jubilee you shall buy from your neighbor and according to the number of years of crops he shall sell to you according to the multitude of years you shall increase its price and according to the to the fewer number as to the few, fewer number of years you shall diminish its price for it sells to you according to the number of the year of the crops therefore you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. So you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land in safety. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your few, and dwell there in safety. And if you say, We shall eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce, then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and to bring forth produce enough for three years, and you shall sow in the eight years and eat old produce until the ninth years until its produce comes in you shall eat of the old harvest the lord shall not be sold the land shall not be sold permanently for the land is mine for you are strangers and sojourners with me and in all the land of your possession you shall grant redemption of the land if any of your brethren becomes poor and has sold some of his possession and it, and if his redeeming relative comes to redeem it then he may redeem what his brother sold or if the man who has no one to redeem it but he himself becomes able to redeem it then let him count the years since it saved and restore the remainder to the man whom, to whom he sold it that he may return to his possession but if he is not able to have it, have it restored to himself then what was sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of jubilee and the jubilee it shall be released and he, and he shall return to his possession if a man sells a house in a world city then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold within a full year he may redeem it but if it is not redeemed within the space of a full year then the house in the world city shall belong permanently to him who bought it throughout his generation it shall not be released in the jubilee however the houses of villages which have no wall around them shall be counted as the fields of the country they may be redeemed and they shall be released in the jubilee nevertheless the cities of the levites and the houses in the cities of their possessions, the, the Levites may redeem at any time. And if a man purchases a house from the Levite, then the house that was sold in the city of his possession shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses in the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the common land of their city may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. If one of your brethren becomes poor and falls into poverty among you, then you shall help him like a stranger or a sojourner that he may live with you. Take no usury or interest from him, but before, but fear your God that your brother may live with you. You shall not lend him your money for usury, nor lend him your food at a profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be with you. And if one of your brethren who dwells with you becomes poor and sells himself to you, you shall not compel him to serve as a slave. As the higher servant and as a sojourner, he shall be with you and shall serve you until the year of Jubilee, and then he shall depart from you, he and his children with him, and shall return to his own family. He shall return to the possession of his fathers, for they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but you shall fear the Lord. And as for your male and female slaves, whom you have, whom you may have from the nations that are around you, from them you may buy male and female slaves. Moreover, you may buy the children of the strangers who dwell among you and their families who are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall become your property. And you may take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them as a possession. They shall be your permanent slaves. But regarding your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule over one another with rigor. Now, if a sojourner or stranger close to you becomes rich, and one of your brethren who dwells by him becomes poor and sells himself by and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner close to you or to a member of the stranger's family after he is sold 
he may be redeemed again. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle, or his uncle's son may redeem him, or anyone who is near of kin to him in his family may redeem him, or if he is able to, or if he is able, he may redeem himself. Thus he shall reckon, thus he shall reckon with him who, who bought him. The price of his release shall be according to the numbers of years, according to the number of years from the year that he was sold to him until the year of jubilee. It shall be according to the time of the hired servant for him. If there are still many years remaining, according to them, he shall repay the price of his redemption from the money which with which he was bought. And if there remain but a few years until the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him, and according to his years, he shall repay him with the price of his redemption. He shall be with him as a yearly hired servant, and shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed in these years, then he shall be released in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. For the children of Israel are servants to me. They are my servants, whom I, br whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. We've come to the end of the Saturday reading. And if you have been reading with me, God bless you. And if you did not have your Bible with you too, bless you. Uh, the most important thing is that you've heard the word of the Lord. And I am grateful to the Lord for giving me this opportunity, for giving me YouTube to be able to read the Bible and share it with people. I bless the Lord for this opportunity and I thank the Lord that I'm the one doing this. And as from today, I will keep taking this serious. I will not mess up with it. May God help me. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to be notified of the next episode. Thank you. Bye.